the, uh, the, the evaluation of the expression of interest has been concluded and they are currently analyzing with a view to publishing the successful companies. And while that is on, we have made contacts with foreign missions and development partners in an effort to att att attracting support for the project. And in this regard, I will add that quite a lot of these development partners are keen to engage with what uh, we are doing here. I will have to singularly mention concern to the Ogoni people and by extension well wishes of the project is funding. In the last couple of months, the board of trustees for the project was able to open the much anticipated escrow account that the funds from the oil companies are to be lodged for onward disbursement of the project. <coughs> we assure you that the monies meant for the cleanup of Ogoni land are sacrosanct for the project and will not be diverted for other uses. This is a solemn pledge as managers of the resources of the project. The project is structured in such a way that no one arm of higher prep can single-handedly allocate or take funds of the projects without following due process. As I mentioned earlier, we are now at the stage where all that you expected of us as a project, that is remediation, provision of potable water, livelihoods, training, and health impact study are on the verge of being seen physically by the Ogoni people. And we urge that this, if we had needed you before to be able to get to this particular stage, we need you much more now that people would be in the field to actually carry out this exercise. And it is important that those of you that are in the communities provide continuous and credible feedback as to the performance of the cleanup exercise. This is the only way we can appreciate the government for summoning the political will to implement the UNEP report on Ogoni land. And I have to add, success in the cleanup of Ogoni land will serve as a template that will cover the entire Niger Delta region. I therefore welcome you to this stakeholders forum and wish you a happy deliberation and on how to achieve success in the Ogoni cleanup. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ishaku, for such an explicit welcome remarks. Yes, he actually represented the Minister of State for Environment. Permit me to recognize uh, in the House, Honorable John Bazia, His Royal Majesty, King Dr. MKF Noya III JP, Benemene Babe Kingdom. Also in the House is Honorable Lata Lolo, the Executive Chairman of Kana Local Government Area, and Professor Ben Nanin. Welcome, sir. In the House is Honorable Mrs. Felicia Tannen, JP, welcome. All right, thank you very much. While we make progress, um, as more dignitaries come in, we'll get you to meet them officially. But right about now, I want to take some short addresses from uh, the Mossop president, uh, who is also a GC member, Mr. Legbosi Piagwara, he's here. We also have another short address by Dr. Peter Medi, who is also the board of trustee member. So ladies and gentlemen, can we give a warm applause as we welcome the Le Mr. Legbosi Piagwara, the president, Mosop, to give his short remarks. Honorable Minister of State for Environment, ably represented by Dr. Ishaku, our respected chiefs and elders of Ogoni land, my brothers and sisters, 
I want to join the minister to welcome all of us to this very important uh, stakeholder forum. This is a long journey that we all started several years ago, precisely 1990 when we launched the Ogunia Bill of Rights and raised serious questions with the state of Ogunia environment. And in that Bill of Rights, we made a solemn pledge that we have to work collectively to stop the Ogunia environment from further degradation and destruction. I think it is that same journey that I brought here today, it is that same journey that has taken us through what the minister just mentioned in here. And I know that in the days ahead, it is only our collective will, our collective support, and our collective resolve that can make this whole thing a success. For us in Mossop, we will continue to give our support to this process and also continue to raise alarm when necessary about what needed to be done. We also want to say that as the process progresses, we are not losing sight of the fact that while you are doing environmental cleanup, we must also do economic cleanup. And that is why for some of us, we see this opportunity as an opportunity we must leverage on to mobilize resources into driving a sustainable livelihood framework for Ghana people. And that is why I call on all of us that we need to put our support in this whole process. We need to strive the much we can to give the credibility that it deserves. Because it's only then we can leverage on this intervention to mobilize support the donor community to intervene, of course, in the sustainable livelihood area, which of course is very, very necessary for our people because we cannot only clean the environment without providing something into our stomach. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that it's an historic opportunity. The entire world is waiting for what is happening in Ogoni land. The entire world is waiting to see, just like the minister says, how the success in Ogoni land can be replicated in other parts of the Niger Delta. There may have been bombs on the way, there may be some challenges, but I know that with our well-known character of patience and endurance, and our support for processes that are laudable and, 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 uh, and creative, I think that we can turn a new page in our collective history. I wish all of us, and of course yesterday, in terms of the funding, I think I got a cheering news from the MD of Shell yesterday that all the funding necessary for this year have been provided by both the IOCs and the government. And I think for us, that is a very positive development. The challenge is now for the project coordination office and for us as a community to see how we can synergize efforts to make sure that the cleanup of Greenland takes place and takes place effectively. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much. And that is the president of Mossop who have been able to make sure that he brings some good balance where and where necessary. Thank you, Mr. Lagwasi Piagwara. Yes, and before the next guest come on stage to give his address, talking about the Kagota president and board member, High Prep, permit me to recognize Professor Walter Olo, Honorable Jacob Simbina here represented, and Marvin Yobana, Honorable Feynman Olungwe, and His Royal Highness, Emeria Emperor J.D. Ingbe. His Royal Highness, Bebe Okwabe, is also here represented. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With a warm round of applause, let's make welcome the BOT member, Dr. Peter Mede, for his short address. The very erudite Dr. Peter Mede. The Honorable Minister for Environment, every represented here, respected chiefs, elders, opinion leaders, religious leaders, 
elites, political and other leaders of Ogoni here present, let me respectfully stand on the protocols. I wish to address you briefly, first as the president of Kagote, and secondly, as a member of the Board of Trustees. For Kagote, at our last meeting, members were fully briefed of the effort so far made by federal government to ensure that uh, our devastated environment is clean. And members who were at the meeting showed very high uh, level of uh, thanks to the federal government for the effort they have made so far, and also appeal that more should be done in terms of uh, making some progress. And so they are expecting that every work that will be on the site will be done speedily so that uh, Ogoni people will begin to smile with a better environment, better livelihood, and a better way of life. As a member of the board, I wish to inform our people that the chairman of the board, our own brother, Wale Edu, has been able to put his word of experience on the administration of the board to ensure that we deliver value to Ogoni. First, he agreed with us that we must ensure that we incorporate the Ogoni Trust Fund. The idea for incorporating the Ogoni Trust Fund was born out of the fear that change of government or disagreement or not understanding themselves in the National Assembly in terms of budgetary procedures will not be able to affect the process. So I can inform you as we speak that the Ogoni Trust Fund has been incorporated with the permission of the Federal Executive Council. So Mr. President has approved that the Ogoni Trust Fund should be incorporated. And I can also inform you that two Ogonis are trustees to the Trust Fund. Now with the Trust Fund in place, we are very sure that uh, change of government, if the present federal government is no longer in place and there's a new leadership in terms of the federal government and they are not interested in the cleanup, that will not affect the cleanup because the incorporating the Ogoni Trust Fund has made it a private led process that government interference will not be able to affect it because the Ogoni Trust Fund now receives, can now receive the fund and deploy the fund without any interference from federal government. So for the Federal Executive Council to approve that, I think the present federal government mean well for Ogoni. Also, the board have made several efforts to ensure that we get a credible bank that will receive the phone. That was also born out of the fear that the banks in Nigeria all have 25 billion naira as the extent to which they are insured. And because we are expecting the phone to come in five trenches of two two hundred million dollars. If you take the exchange rate differentials of that, it means we shall be expecting about 75 million naira each year. And we, at the board, was not sure of entrusting 75 billion naira to a bank that has 25 million naira capitalization. So for the security of your fund, 
it was expedient for those of us in the board to go to sh get a very credible bank that has a stronger capitalization so that your phone can be secured. Secondly, because we are expecting beyond the one billion dollars, because part of our mandate at the board is to mobilize more phone from more reputable donor agencies all over the world. We also needed a bank that donor agencies around the world will trust and will see as being credible to be able to put their money into. So let me inform you that to get that very success, the board secured, got approval, and has opened account with Standard Chartered Bank of London. That is another major milestone we have achieved as a board. Having gotten that, we are now sure that your phone is secured. We are now sure that the cleanup is secured. So I can happily inform you that government is serious, the board is serious, the structures for the cleanup is also serious. Let me also inform you that as part of what we have achieved at the board and the governing council, we succeeded in passing through the rigor to ensure that our son, Dr. Marvin Deki, who is highly experienced in the art of remediation, I'm talking of a man that has a doctorate degree in environmental related sciences and also a first degree in law, we succeeded.